Hello, welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Mr. Bradley Busetto. He is the UN Resident Coordinator and the UNDP Resident Representative in Armenia. Uh, Mr. Busetto, thank you very much. Thanks, it's a real pleasure to be with you. you. Uh, this is part of our series called Ambassadors of Goodwill. Uh, to show um, our viewers what embassies, international organizations in Armenia do. Uh, and we've had this discussion oftentimes that ambassadors are here protecting or espousing the interests of their country. The UN is very, very different from that. Mm -hmm. The UN has its own very particular, specific mission. Um, you've been in Armenia now for just over a year, uh, but before your posting, you were in some interesting places, that's right, that's right, Cambodia, that's right. Indonesia, Iraq, Bosnia, Herzegovina. How has the experience been so far for you here in Armenia compared to your other postings? Sure, well, uh, thanks again for the opportunity to speak to, to the audience of CivilNet and sort of Armenia and beyond. Um, I think the, the work that you're doing is really, really important for, for Armenia. I just wanted to get that out there um, first and foremost uh, and just sort of strengthening, I guess, the public discourse and, and strengthening media. Um, well, how is, how is my work here different? Um, I spent a lot of my career with the UN uh, working um, in humanitarian contexts, um, so responding to emergencies and to crises. Um, here the context is different. Um, Armenia is a, is a more or less a, it's a stable country, it's a developing country, it's a different context, and so there are different issues at stake, very different, but, but it's, a, it's a challenging different. nonetheless, I'm sure. Yeah, so there are challenges in every job and in every country. Speaking of challenges, uh, you have just launched a new initiative with the government of Armenia, along with other uh, organizations like the OSCE, the Council of Europe, uh, having to do with human rights. That's Tell right. us about that. Sure, sure. Um, Thanks for the question. Well, today, in fact, we, we launched together with the government um, Armenia's Human Rights Action Plan. And it, it's, it's not the UN's action plan, but it's, it's the um, action plan for human rights for the, for the government of Armenia. And it's a really important document. It's, it's the first um, action plan of its kind that, sort of, that includes virtually all of the issues related to, to human rights and human rights legislation. Um, for the country of Armenia. And we, the UN, have been working with um, the government of Armenia, especially the Ministry of Justice on this for quite some time. And it's finally been, been released. It, it's, it's not a perfect document, but, but what's important about it is indeed it's sort of, it, it is the first step. And it's the first step, uh, first attempt to be really comprehensive. Um, and so in order to launch that, in order to sort of get as much momentum around it as possible, um, we invited the Prime Minister to co-host this event with us, uh, along with the Ministry, Minister of Justice and with other key international organizations um, here in Armenia, including the European Union, the Council of Europe, um, the OSCE. Um, I think very importantly too, um, civil society was very much involved. There were some key and senior civil society representatives there. I think a wide audience. So the point is really to to use today to, to build momentum, to build um, confidence in this action plan and, and, and just in, in work on human rights in general. Um, I think an important point I would like to make about that is that, again, it's not, it's not a perfect document and we're not saying it is, but, but it is a, it's an important first step. And <clears throat> by bringing people together, and especially bringing the public into this conversation and bringing civil society into this conversation, it importantly builds accountability, right? Um, it, it, it helps sort of galvanize everybody, government, civil society, all the stakeholders involved to, to really get something done. It, it's, it's amazing to me. So this is the first action plan of its kind for human rights. Now, we, I know that we have national strategies on our action plans for, for different sectors or, or, or areas, but first time for human rights? The first one that is, is so comprehensive, and this is developed out of a strategy that, that, that has been long in the making too, so it's an important first step, and, and many countries around the world have gone through this progress of developing a strategy, then putting together a plan, and then, but I guess the, well, I guess the key message I was trying to give today at the, um, at, the, at the conference, at the press conference earlier, was that, okay, it's great to have an action plan, but let's put the emphasis on action instead of planning now, and let's really try to get something done. Get a, 
I would take it a step further and say, well, you know, we've seen over the course of the past, you know, 20 years since independence, maybe not 20 years, less 10, 15 years, a lot of uh, strategy, national strategies on um, the status of women, on on the handicapped, and, and, and you know, and then they have the accompanying action plan with all of its um, d uh, different components. But the problem then becomes, is the budget being allocated for those actions? With included within the plan, is there oversight? Is there accountability? Now, getting civil society involved in actually, the, I'm also assuming in the development of the of the action plan. Then, I, I mean, to put the the onus on international organizations or the UN or embassies to put pressure on the government to make sure that they implement it is perhaps unfair, and that's the role of the rest of us to do. Mm. I think you're making a good point. I, I wouldn't say it's our role to be to be putting pressure on the government, not at all, but to, to really work with the government. Facilitate, yeah. assist, you know, sure. Broker, facilitate. Um, and I think it's natural that the, 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 the public at large, civil society, human rights advocates, they're the ones out there um, working closely hand in hand, I would hope, um, with the government to, to, to make progress. Um, but it's, you know, we. Armenia has made a lot of progress in, in, in human rights and, and in signing various conventions and in pushing for in various sectors, for example, in gender equality and, and other areas, and making progress, but still lots of work remains to be done. But, uh, but I think the key is it, it, it's sort of opening up the participation, um, not just to the usual suspects, not just the usual suspects within the human rights world or civil society, but getting the public at large much more involved in, in what this means. Um, and a lot of these things don't take, yeah, financing is, is, is needed in some areas, for example, where you might need to, to change how different parts of the government work, or you might need certain equipment or whatever. But, but for a lot of this, you don't. You just need to, to raise more awareness or you need to pass legislation, for example, um, to passing a law uh, against discrimination of all kinds. That's part of the action plan. That doesn't cost any extra money, right? That's just something you could do. It that's, just that's costs political will. <laughs> costs political will, maybe societal will too, but, but, but it, yeah, that doesn't cost money. And, and there, there are many other examples I can give where it doesn't take a lot of money to, 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 to move ahead with this plan. Yeah, oftentimes... Move ahead with human rights work. Sure, sure. I think that the, the biggest problem that we have had in Armenia, not only Armenia, I think in most post-Soviet uh, uh, countries um, having that Soviet experience, there it's a lack of trust between government and society. I mean, mm -hmm. vice versa, government doesn't trust society, society doesn't trust government, and that's where the problems uh, arise. Mm -hmm. If you were to say the if, uh, through your experience, I mean, your years of experience working with the United Nations and now being in Armenia, um, what is or what are some of the the more crippling, critical, important challenges that uh, you see here within the realm of the work that you do? Well, let me just go back, if I may, um, to some sort of more, more encouraging signs. Um, you know, I, I was, we were pleased to see the Vilnius statement that was made several months ago um, from the government, you know, reaffirming their commitment to, to human rights. Um, Recently, the government launched its uh, program of work, also highlighting human rights. So those are all good things that help help foster confidence of the people and confidence of civil society. But, but sure, there there are challenges here. There are challenges, um, you know. There's there are security challenges here. There that that hinder growth. There are economic challenges. The the lack of jobs. The the outward migration related to the lack of jobs. Um, and I think you, you also put your, your finger on it, this, this feeling of a, a lack of participation in society. Sometimes a, some people feel a sort of lack of a future or lack of confidence in, in, in how society will progress. And so I think it's important to try to, and these are hard, hard, hard problems to tackle. It's not like the UN or or one part of society, it, it has to be a concerted effort of, of all actors and everybody constantly working on this because um, um, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it is so challenging. Um, but I think a, a, 
you know, we, could, we can focus on creating jobs, and we do in the United Nations. We help try to focus on creating jobs in rural areas where people are sort of more likely to, to want to leave the country, for example, which I find is a major, major challenge. It's really quite high levels of outward migration. But, but we can also focus on simply increasing participatory governance. Now, what does that mean? That means that people are participating in society, participating in in how government works, participating in the economy, participating in their education. And you know, through work that you do at CivilNet and, and, and through um, sort of expanding and making more flexible and more diverse the media, all these things um, have, have, have impact. But it's a, it's a matter of, I don't know how to put it, but, but just in many, many ways trying to increase participation of, of all society and, and bring that confidence back, bring that confidence back and sort of remove that doubt. Yeah, I think that most of the time we feel like we're really sprinting, running to catch up to the rest of the world when we sometimes have to take a step back and realize that um, we're still a very, very new country that has to go through those processes. Just sometimes we feel like time is running out or and, and, working and, against us. Yeah, and we shouldn't be completely negative at all. No, because it's the country is just a you know, just a little bit over 20 years old and then made a huge progress in so many different areas. Considering it's the geopolitical location, yeah. the problem Consider with, yeah. Considering it's sort of existential challenges all around it. And uh, so, so, no, we have to keep this in perspective, uh, I think, absolutely. Good, and on that positive note, uh, <laughs> putting things into perspective and sometimes seeing the light in the darkness uh, and working together, mm. all components of society, Mm. government, civil society, international organizations, mm. embassies who are trying to do good work in the country. So I'd like to thank you, Mr. Bradley Busetto, uh, for taking the time out to host us here in your office and talk about uh, the new national strategy on human rights protection and what the UN does in Armenia. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure to be with you. And, and thanks to you. And keep up the good work on your side. Thanks. thanks. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest today was the UN Resident Coordinator and the UNDP Resident Representative in Armenia, Mr. Bradley Busetto. Stay with CivilNet. <laughs>